the teaching that we're going to be dealing with today is a teaching um, based on something that we touched on whilst we at street camp last night. Um, therefore, I'd like to title it, um, um, To Know the History is to Know the Mystery. Um, I'd like to title it that because it explains some of the things that we um, were dealing with. But not only that, I think it's important that some things we revisit and some things we expand upon just a little bit more. No. To know the I'd like it to know... To, to, to know the history is to know the mystery. Okay. All right. The um, scripture I'd like to open up with, um, which offices do I have available to, uh, to me right now? Office of the Lord. Have... Sure. All right. Very good. Um, I would like, obviously, the, the reading to be done, and I'd like it to be taken from Titus chapter 2 and 11. Um, I'm trying to save Officer uh, Dwayne's voice because he's, <clears throat> he's losing it just a little bit. Um, but let's uh, have Officer you, if you would um, do the reading at this time. We'll need you a little bit later, Officer Dwayne. So let's save yours a little bit. All right. So if we have the scripture, which is taken from Titus chapter 2 and verse 11, um, to our sisters who are out there, shalom to you. Um, I, I didn't hear any, any sisters. I know Sister Brenda's there because she uh, sent me some information just a moment ago. So is there anyone else, any other sisters out there? I guess mm -hmm. not. Brother, does okay. does does is here? Does yes, I, I've got yeah. you. To the Lord and Ada. Hallelujah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's good. That's good. All right. So Titus chapter two, and verse eleven. Um, if we could go to that, please, and officer, if you could begin to read. Book of Titus chapter two, verse eleven. For the grace of Yahweh that bringeth salvation had appe hath appeared to all men. So it tells us that the grace of the, the Most High that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men. Now, the, the, the thing that we need to consider when dealing with this particular verse is that there are some things we have to rule out and some things we have to rule in. The thing we must rule out is the fact that when the scripture says that the grace, and again, people use this term, and it comes from Christianity, which comes from the Protestant movement, which is grace is the unmerited favor of God. That's what they usually say. Uh, but I've, I've taught this before, and I've mentioned this. It is far more than just an unmerited favor. That's too simplistic to title this, this, this word grace and make it something that um, holds um, just a small corner of what it's really trying to convey. We will go into it a little bit more depth in a moment, but let's go forward first. For the grace of Yahweh that bringeth, continually bringeth, salvation hath appeared to all men. Incorrect. It is normally taught that there it is right there. It says it has brought uh, grace has, has, has been brought by way of salvation to all men. Incorrect. It is not to all men. Again, the reason why I've got to keep on going over scriptures like this is because, unfortunately, you will be speaking to someone who is still wrapped up in Christianity. It is inevitable that you're going to. It is inevitable that when you speak to someone, they're going to use it as a shield 
or a coat of armor to say that don't judge me in the way that I look and everything else because I'm covered under grace. And that's absolute nonsense. We experienced this just last night, and I think that's what's helped to trigger this teaching. Uh, we, met, um, we met Eve on the street, and uh, we seemed a little bit lost, not, not quite there. However, the fact that we met her and one of the officers was trying to speak with her uh, to find out if she understood who she is according to the scriptures. And the reason why, why that is so vitally important that we find out, do you know who you are according to scripture? Because 90% of the time, notice 90%, I, I would dare say 95 if I'm going to be so bold. But I'm giving a, a little bit of, of, of margin here. 90% of the time, most of our people, most Jake, most of Jacob, do not know who they are according to the scriptures. How can they? They've never been taught it. Never been taught in schools, universities, or places of high learning. Never been taught. Because this is the greatest secret in the entire world. There are other secrets, but this is the greatest. The hidden ones are even hidden among themselves, and the only people who know are the people outside of us. Now, when you understand this now, those people who are in Christianity will always say, there it is, it says, hath, salvation hath appeared to all men. Meaning that, Every man is entitled to salvation. Well, it's impossible for that to happen, especially when you understand the way that certain crimes, especially in this country, and generally speaking worldwide, that if you commit murder or any atrocities, you are not let out of the, of, of the circumstances. You are held accountable until you have been brought to court and tried and a punishment has been rendered on, upon you. So then how can everyone, notice every man, all men, now be in a position where they can turn around and say, hey, you know, we're all the same. A, we're not all the same. Hey, he's forgiven everybody. No, he has not forgiven everyone because you can't do a mass extermination, a mass genocide of people, not just within the 19th century, but in every century going back nearly 3,000 years. You can't get away with that and think you can do that and then come out clean because like someone has washed you with tie and now you're sparkling, glowing white. Well, I'm sorry to say that's not the case, and that is not what this scripture is saying. First of all, when it speaks about all men, it's speaking about a particular group of people. That's what it's speaking about. And that's where many times we have lost it. Well, um, I, I think I would like to um, um, go to a scripture. If you go to um, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 3, we're going to read verse 9. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 3, and we're going to read verse 9. And we're going to read it in its entirety, and then after it's been read, then I'm going to go back and break it down a little bit. All right. As you please, Officer, you. I'm the Apocrypha. Uh, the book of uh, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 3, verse 9. They put their trust in him. They that put their trust in him shall understand the truth, and as such be faithful in love, shall, be faithful in love shall abide with him. For grace and mercy is to his saint, and he hath care for his elect. All right. Now, let's break that down. And, and, and again, as, as you can see, ladies and gentlemen, before I, I, I give some expl explanation here, you can see that if we did not have the Apocrypha, if we did not have it, and you can see why it's been removed out of 
the general Bible uh, called the King James Bible. Because in the original 1611, this is actually in it. Now watch what it says. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 3 and verse 9. They that put their trust in him. Who's the him? Yahweh, our father, which is in heaven. Shall understand the truth. The only way you're going to understand the truth, and remember, I've been pushing this for the last several weeks now. Truth, truth, truth. What? Because that's what we're in now. We're in the truth. It's got to become a terminology that you become very comfortable with using. It says, shall understand the truth, that such as be faithful in love shall abide with him. So we must be faithful in the love of this truth it will cause us to abide with him. The word abide there comes from the word to tabernacle, to dwell with him. And then it goes on to say, watch it now, for grace and mercy is to his saints. Aha. I don't see anything there that says to everybody. All right, and I'm going to hold this very quickly. I won't finish it just yet. I want you, officer, if you will run to Psalms 148. Psalms 148. And if you could read, <clears throat> let me just quickly, quickly see if I can find that because it just dropped into my head. Psalms 148 um, and verse 14. Uh, yes, verse 14, Psalms 148 and 14. Book of Psalms, chapter 148, verse 14. Also exalted the horn of his people, the praise of all his saints, even of the children of Israel, a people near unto him. Praise ye the Most High. Well, well, well. As we see there, it says, the saints, are dealing with those are who are his people. So now, if you didn't understand who the saints are, the saints are his people. The saints are not those statues in, um, uh, in Rome at the Vatican that has these pictures of, and, and these statues of the St. Paul and, and, and the St. Peter, and they all look Caucasian. That's not the saints. Those are not the saints. Those are not the ones that the scriptures are speaking about. The saints are his people. He also exalted the horn of his people, his people, the praise of all his saints, even the children of Israel. The word even here, which, which means to say, who are the children of Israel. That's why when you read the word even, it means who are. It's another word where it says an old, uh, uh, old English way of saying it. Uh, the children of Israel. A people near unto him. Praise ye the Lord. So what we see then, the saints are his people. Now, in case anyone is having any brain trouble, and I don't mean any of you are listening, by the way, um, I'm just going to quickly read Psalms 50 and verse 50, uh, uh, Psalm 50 and verse 5. And watch what it says. Gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. See that? So it makes it very, very clear. Now the gather here, the word gather, the precept to that comes from Matthew t- uh, 24 and 31. Now, as we read on, it says, Gather my, my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Now, the sacrifice here goes back to old covenant, all right? And you'll find that the, the precept to that in Leviticus chapter 1 and 1. All right, now, let's get back to, to, to where we were. So I, I want to get back to um, Songs of Solomon, chapter 3 
and verse 9. I'll finish it. It says, For grace and mercy is to his saints. So we get grace. We get mercy. This is why he will be merciful to us. Because right now we are going through judgment. Right now, our people are being judged left, right, and center all over the world. Wherever we've been scattered, we've been treated like the rubbish of the street, especially, primarily, here in the United States of America, which is the country of Babylon. But then it goes on to say, and he hath cared for his elect. See that? So the saints are his elect let me repeat and he hath cared for his elect we see now in that one verse that the saints are his elect now in understanding that we're beginning to see then that the term that we read in second in, in, in titus chapter 2 and verse 11 is explaining to us who this grace is for and I'm trying to push this very hard again because I, want, I, don't want, I don't want you to buck on it. I don't want you to feel like when someone comes to you and they say, well, okay, what about Titus uh, chapter 2 and 11 then? And you know how, how they do. Ephesians chapter 4 <laughs> or, or John 3.16. They come with all of these scriptures not knowing how to break them down. They just quote the scripture out there, not realizing that the scripture is, is more than what it appears. Now, go with me, if you please, to First um, uh, uh, Samuel chapter 2 and 3. Now, while you're, you're going there, it is important, as the title of this teaching is, that uh, if you cannot know the history, you will not know the mystery. You have to know the history to know the mystery. You, you, you just have to. It's the only way that you're going to come to grips with the scriptures. It's the only way you're going to learn it. And again, I'll break that down a, a little bit more as, as we go along. So if you have it, officer, First Samuel chapter 2 and 3, go ahead and read if you please. Look at First Samuel chapter 2, verse 3. Talk no more so exceedingly proudly. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth, your mouth, for the Most High is a God of knowledge, and by his actions are weighed. Wow. So it, it's telling us clearly here, very clearly, it's, it says this, talk no more of exceeding proudly, because that's what people do. They pick up the scriptures every week, and they begin to speak proudly about what they think they know the scripture is saying, and they have no clue. Yet the Most High is saying here, stop, stop acting or talking on this information like you know what it is saying when you don't. And it said, let not ignorance come out of your mouth. And that's what's been coming out of many of our people's mouths who are Jake, who are Sunday go-to-church worshippers, who are delved and steeped in Christianity, and they, and they think they have it together. Well, they have it together to, to, to teach it or to preach it, to move your emotions, but your emotions is not going to be the thing that's going to get you into the kingdom. It's going to be the knowledge you knowing who you are, you knowing where you stand, you knowing what you must do to make it. Then it goes on to say, uh, for the Lord, Most High, Yahweh, is a God of knowledge. So he's a God of knowledge. So you're meant to know something. You're not meant to be ignorant. That's why it says, let not ignorance come out of your mouth. See that? All right. And then he goes on to say, and by him, actions are weighed. He's going to weigh everything that you're saying based upon the actions that you are putting to what you think you know it to be true. 
By him we receive knowledge. The Heavenly Father is, the, is only dealing with nationality. That's all he's dealing with. He's not dealing with every nation under the sun. And I know some of us, some of us, you know, oh, we, 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 we love that nation, we love this nation. The scriptures is very clear. He's only dealing with nationality. To prove it, officer, let's talk you please to Deuteronomy uh, 32 and verse 8. Deuteronomy 32 and verse 8. A very common scripture that we use many times when we're out in street ministry. Book of Deuteronomy, <clears throat> chapter 32, verse 8. When the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. All right. Now watch this. When the Most High divided to the nations, right there, that lets you know he's dealing with nations. He divided up the nations because he never wanted Israel to mix with other nations. That's not what he wanted. Then he said, then he separated, uh, yeah, let me back up, the nations to their inheritance. So every nation has its own inheritance. But then it says, when he separated the sons of Adam, that means everyone came out of Adam, and therefore they had to be separated. Because even though we came out of one, we are separated by the, um, the election so he knows who he has elected, and it is those that he is focusing on. Then it says he set bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. Now watch this, verse 9. Go ahead and read, officer. Verse 9. For the Most High's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his, of his inheritance. See that? For the people that are his portion is Jacob. And Jacob is Israel. So that is his portion. In other words, I've, I've, I've made a cake, but what I've decided to do, I'm cutting a portion of this cake, and that is mine. No one can touch it. The rest you can have. Now, if I choose to do with this piece of the cake what I choose to do, it's nobody's business. If I choose to make this portion of the cake and, and increase it to make it more than the rest of the cake, it's nobody's business. But if I choose to punish this portion of the cake, that's what I want to do. It's nobody's business. He's making it very clear that his portion is his portion. To get further clarity, of a precept to back that up. Let's go to Sirach chapter 17 and 17. Sirach chapter 17 and 17. That comes under the with of um, Ecclesiasticus. From the Apocrypha. Right. From, the, from the Apocrypha. Uh, Sirach or Ecclesiasticus chapter 17 verse 17. For in the division of the nations of the whole earth, he set a ruler over every people. But Israel is the most highest portion. You see that? So he makes it very clear. For in the dividing of the nations, remember, he's dealing with nationality. That's why you've got to get it out of your head that, oh, that, that he's dealing with that nationality. And that, no, he's not. No, he is not. Let's get this further into our head, that are our people scattered among the other nations? Yes. Now, do we know who they are? No, we don't. Oh, well, well that, that, you know, that they must be because they look like. No, you can't do that. It's, if their spirit, if their spirit now is, is, is cognizant,
Hello? Yeah, I'm here. Like everything just cut off. <clears throat> can you hear me? Yeah. I can hear. Yeah, things just cut off. I don't know what happened. Was that you, Wanda? No, this is here, Jenny here. Hey, Hello. Brother Johnny. All right. Hello. We still here also. Hello. Hello. We here. Hello. You hear me? No, yeah. I, I got cut off. There. I got cut off. <laughs> uh, okay, I was, I was wondering what happened, so let me go on ahead and mute now. I was just about to ask what happened. All right, uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm back with you. What was the last thing you heard me say, please? I think we were reading, we were reading on Ecclesiastical 17 and 17. Yes, I, I know. What was the last thing that I said? Oh, it was about the Lord's portion. Uh, All right. Okay. So, in 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 uh, Ecclesiastes chapter seventeen, thank you, and and eighteen, it says this. Go ahead and read, if you please, Officer seventeen and eighteen. Ecclesiastes chapter seventeen, verse eighteen. Whom, being his firstborn, he nourisheth with discipline, and giving him the light of his love, does make him does not forsake him. All right. So, he says here, whom being his firstborn. So, that word firstborn ties in to uh, the book of Exodus, where it lets us know who his firstborn is. I think that's 2 and 20, if my memory serves me right. And here, he says, whom being the firstborn, he nourisheth with discipline. <clears throat> and that's what we're going through right now, much discipline. We're being, we've been di- disciplined by the nations that we are among. What does that mean? Remember, Esau is the sword of the Lord. <laughs> and and to many of us, we find that hard to even conceive. How could Esau be the sword of the Most High God? Because he made Esau to be a whip to our back. That's why when we read here, it makes it very clear. It says, um, he, uh, in uh, Ecclesiastes, uh, I'm sorry, um, Ecclesiastes chapter 17 and 18, it says, whom being his firstborn, he nourished with discipline. Nourishing meaning whatever actions he needs to take to discipline us, that's what he'll do. And he says, and giving him the light of his love does not forsake him. So even though it may appear that he has forsaken us, he has never forsaken us. He's been watching us. He's been like a guardian over us. But remember, we have sinned. And therefore, the curses are upon us. And therefore, we have to go through all of these things, whether we like it or not. But from here, ladies and gentlemen, let's go to Hosea chapter 4 and 6, a scripture that we are all very familiar with. Let's go. Hosea chapter uh, 4 and verse 6. Book of Hosea chapter 4, verse 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy most of thy, of thy God, I will also forget thy children. Right. So you see here, he's making it very clear that we are destroyed because we forsake to receive the knowledge that brings us understanding. We have forsaken it. 
And he's telling us clearly here, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge because you have rejected knowledge. And remember, key word, knowledge. We are in this to gain knowledge. Knowledge and understanding. We've read that in, in the former scriptures. And because you have rejected it, he said, that thou shalt no more be a priest to him. Now, does it mean that that is that forever? That's only during a certain period. And he's only dealing, when he says this, to the masses. He has still selected priests from among us so that they would continue to teach the truth to wake us up. Because remember, we are, we are going to be a nation of priests. In other words, a kingdom of priests. That's why it says uh, uh, of kings and priests. It's a kingdom of priests. Seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, and I will also forget thy children. And it's Exodus chapter 4 and 22 is, is, is the firstborn. Thank you so much. Exodus chapter 4 and 22 deals with his firstborn. Now, ladies and gentlemen, with this in mind, let's give a precept to this uh, verse here, and let's go to Jeremiah 44 and 16. Follow me closely, please. Jeremiah 44 and 16. Book of Jeremiah, chapter 44, verse 16. As for the word that thou hast spoken unto us, in the name of the Most High, we will not hearken unto thee. You see that? So you see, the people <laughs> turned around and became malicious. Because they turned around and said, As for the word that thou hast spoken unto us in the name of the Most High, we will not hearken unto thee. But watch this. Read the next verse, please, and read it slowly. I want people to catch this now. Read. Verse 17. But we will certainly do whatsoever thing goeth forth out of our own mouth, to burn incense unto the queen of heaven, and to, pour out, <clears throat> and to pour out drink offerings unto her, as we have done, we and our fathers, our kings, and princes in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. For them had, for then had we plenty of victuals and were well and saw no evil. See that? So what you have just seen there is a stiff-necked people who turned around and said, but we will certainly do whatsoever things goeth forth out of our own mouth to burn incense unto the queen of heaven. Right there, you, you, you're seeing how nasty our spirit has been, why the Most High has done what he has done to us. I mean, th th this book is evidence against us to show us where we, we came up short. And that's why whenever you find yourself going off and start to say certain things, you've got to quickly check yourself because that's the spirit that existed back then. And then you must ask yourself the question, why is it that, that, that I, I don't want to say those things, but I, I'm still saying those things? Well, you're saying it because it's the same spirit that was ba around back then. You only come back today. You've only been regenerated again, and you're saying the same thing. He's it, trying to get you to change, change your thoughts, change your heart, change your spirit. But we come back with the same attitude and we're saying the same thing. Imagine coming back, born as a child, raised up as a young, a young adolescent, become an, an adult, and hopefully you'd be getting it right the, the next time around. But look at this, still playing the same old foolish game, still doing the same old foolish thing. Then we wonder why is all this happening to us? Really? That's why when you start saying certain things, you've got to catch yourself and say, oh my goodness, I realize why I'm saying it now because that, that spirit is still in me. You've got to check yourself. 
They said they're going to offer offerings unto the queen of heaven, and they're going to pour out drinks offering unto her, and, and, and they're going to do as, as, they, as they wish. All right, um, I, I, didn't, I didn't note this one down, but um, let me see if I can find it. It's in Deuteronomy chapter 27, I think that's in the last verse. Um, Deuteronomy 27 and the very last verse of that. Uh, bear with me. Just finding it now. Deuteronomy 27. And this is what it says. I'll go ahead and read it off of it. It says, it said, um, uh, it says, Cursed be he that confirmeth not all the words of this law to do them. And all the people shall say amen. We said amen to follow and to obey his word. We said amen to that. And that's why we're cursed. Because we agreed when Moses first pronounced this unto us. We agreed with him. We said, yes, we will follow this. And we said, amen. We sealed it. When, remember, when you, when you say amen, you are saying amen, not just for you, but to you and every seed that will come from your loins. And that's why every generation that's come out of you since has said the same thing and fallen into the same curse. Why? Because you agreed. And this is where you found it. So, all right. From here, let, let's go to Second uh, Timothy chapter 3 and 15. Second Timothy chapter 3 and verse 15. Book of Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 15. And that from a child thou hast known the, the Holy Scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in the Yamashiach, Yahawashah. You see that? So, as I just said, because you have, when you said amen back then, you agreed, not just you standing there, but every seed that was inside of you that would bring forth a generation was in agreement with the same thing. And therefore, when you, when you broke it, you broke it and cursed every seed that's in your generation that was to come forth. And that's why our children and children's children, they have come out cursed. We agreed it in the beginning, and then this is what we went and did to mess up our children. We have messed up our children. Most times it's parents who mess up their children. People say, well, no, parents are good. Not all. Don't get it twisted. A lot of children are messed up because of their parents, because of bad parenting. And you look around today, you will see it. Parents say one thing, but don't live it. And therefore, their, their children won't follow it because they see you say something, but you're living a completely different life. And watch what the scriptures right here has broken down and told us. It, it makes it very, very plain. It said, and f that from a child... Thou hast known the Holy Scriptures. And notice, it didn't say Scripture. It said Scriptures. Meaning you have known all, not just a part. It's like when someone walks up to us in the street and they say, hey, um, you know, I know the Scripture. Exactly. You know one Scripture. You don't know the Scriptures. You don't know all of it. But it says, you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation. This is how you, begin, you, you are saved, through what you know, the knowledge, not by your emotions. Yes, we do. We're moved by the word. Yes, great, wonderful. But you've got to know how to, uh, how to walk by faith, which is in Yahawashai, Yahmashiach. Quickly, go to Matthew chapter 25 and 2. Matthew 25 and 2. Just, just want to touch that verse really quick. It's, I don't want to say that. I just want to touch it real quick. Book of Matthew chapter 25, verse 2. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. Go on. Verse 3. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. Verse 4, but the, but the wise took oil in their vessels with them, 
with their lamps. With their lamps. So, so it, it's important, and, and I'm not, not going to get sidetracked. I just felt like I needed to read that verse. Because remember, there, we are the same people, but some of us are wise and some of us are foolish. That's basically the point that I wanted to bring out there. Because we're all the same Israel doesn't mean we're all the same wisdom. Some of us are wise and some of us are foolish. And going back to Second Timothy uh, chapter 3 and, and, and verse, and instead of 15, I want to read verse 16. Watch what it says. It says, all scripture is given by the inspiration of Yahweh and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Our instruction is in righteousness. And here it is. The Bible to us is like a gigantic jigsaw puzzle. It has many pieces. The pieces must be put together for you to be able to see a true picture of what the scriptures is trying to convey to you. Hence, the Bible says, watch it, hear a little, bear a little, line upon line. You see, precept must be upon precept. We're building a picture here. And that's why when someone is standing in the pulpit and giving you one scripture and then speaking for the next 45 minutes of their own opinion, they have just lost you. You must use scripture to confirm scripture. Period. Romans chapter 11 and verse 7. Please. Romans chapter 11 and verse 7. Let's go there. <clears throat> Book of Romans, chapter 11, verse 7. What then? Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election hath, hath obtained it, and the rest were blinded. See that? So it says, what then? Notice there's a question mark. A question is being asked. What then? Here's the answer. Israel has not obtained that which he seeketh for. But the election has obtained it, and the rest were blinded. Isn't that interesting? So it's making us to understand very, very clearly here that the election... It's only for a certain group of people. Let's go to Zechariah chapter 13 and 8. Zechariah chapter 13 and 8. Let's, let's, uh, let's, let's give a little bit more meat to that. Excuse me. Book of Zechariah chapter 13, verse 8. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Most High, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third, third part but the third shall be left therein. So it makes it very clear that if you want to be a part of that third, if you want that, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, you are going to have to earnestly, this is what the scripture says, earnestly contend for the faith, meaning you must fight for this. It's not going to happen by you just sitting around and taking it easy. You have to fight for this. It says, and it shall come to pass, meaning it's going to happen. Nothing can stop this. That in all the land, and, it's, and when it says all the land, it's dealing primarily, the focal point is on America. The focal point is on America because this is where the largest group of Judah is. Remember, 
Judah, and all of the other nations are scattered here. But we must also bear in mind that in the other nations, they are also scattered, and there will be two parts destroyed in the other nations, and only one will be left in the other nations. But the primary location, the largest land hold, the greatest captivity of, 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 of Israel, who goes back in antiquity, are here in the United States of America. So there will be a great death here of our people. Listen, I'm not talking about the nations right now. Come on. I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about us. We are going to be destroyed. That's why many of these churches you see, they're going to be destroyed. Why? Because they are hallowed hold unto the enemy. They're not hallowed holes unto the Most High God. They're never built with that in mind. How, how can you say that? Every one of them have crosses. Every one of them have sign, uh, insignias that points back to Rome. And if you have an insignia that points back to Rome, then you are a part of Rome. You are part of, 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 of the wine that has drunken the people. Now this is heavy stuff because we've never seen it this way before. We've always seen, well, church is church. And it's true. That's how we used to believe it. But remember, you are not operating just under church, per se. You're operating under the truth of what makes you the church. Therefore, you must have knowledge. And that's why you have to pray and ask the Most High, Lord, you know, our Father, remember me in thy kingdom that I will be part of the elect, if it be thy will. Don't take it for granted that, well, I'm in the truth, now I'm going to make it. No, sir. The scripture says, ye that endures to the end, the same shall be. So you've got to get to the end. And it depends on how you finish. Glory be to his name. So from there, let's go to Psalms 119, 104. 119, 104. Let's deal with, with this, because this, what we're going to now is, is especially for yourself, uh, Justice. Because I want you to make the very heavy notes on this. Psalms 119, verse 104. Book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 104. Through thy precepts I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every false way. See that? Through thy precepts, I get understanding. Precepts. In fact, uh, officer, jump back up to verse 100 and read that. Verse 100. I understand <clears throat> more than the ancients because I keep thy precepts. See? Your understanding grows because of the precepts. What is the precept? The, the ability to take a scripture and then un, and use another scripture to bring out clarity for you to understand. That's why it says, I understand more than the ancients. So it's making you know right there that you understand more than those in times past. And in verse 104, it says, through thy precepts, I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every false way. Then when you jump down to verse 110, it says, The wicked have laid a snare for me, yet I earn not from thy precepts. Letting you know clearly there that the precepts, what you learn, what you understand, guides you and gives you wisdom and understanding. Because the laws give wisdom. All right, from there, what I want to do, a backup scripture to go with what you just, we've just read, goes to Isaiah 28 
and verse 9. We've got to deal with doctrine now. That's, that's, um, what is a doctrine? All right, so Isaiah 28 and verse 9. Let's go. Book of Isaiah, chapter 28, verse 9. Whom shall he teach knowledge, and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. So notice what it says. Whom shall he teach knowledge, and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Now the word doctrine, in its basic form it means teaching. But this is what doctrine means. Doctrine means a set of beliefs. That's what it, 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 it's focusing on. So when we talk about doctrine or teaching, we're teaching a set of beliefs that only comes from one place, that comes from the throne of the Most High, our Father. It doesn't come from anywhere else. It doesn't come from the precepts of men doesn't come from th their philosophies and their vain doctrine. doesn't come from any of that. But watch this now. When it now uses the term milk, we must understand that the word milk is dealing with a, a particular order. Milk is the lower understanding of the scriptures. That's what milk is. It's the lower understanding. That's why in the New Testament, it speaks about those who are on the sincere milk of the, of the word of, of Yah. That's dealing with the lower understanding. If someone is still on milk, they're on lowly understanding. That's where their understanding level is. But then, when we now move to meat, meat is the higher levels of understanding of the scriptures. That's what meat is. So meat, when you deal with it, it is it's the thing that you, you have to, you spend more time chewing on it. You have to macerate it more. You just don't take it and swallow it. Milk, you swallow. That's the whole purpose of it. You drink it. But meat, you have to work What's the work? You have to bite it. You have to macerate it. And therefore, it's work because you're on a higher level. And, you, and, and, and if you swallow it, it will choke you. It will kill you. That's why meat requires time, effort. But once you macerate it and you're able to swallow it and take it down, it makes you stronger. Because meat makes you stronger than milk. Milk grows you, but meat strengthens you. I hope you're with me out there listening to this. And so, that's what we come to understand. Now, to break it down even further with you, let's go to 1 Peter chapter 2 and 1. Watch this now. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 1. All right. Look at 1 Peter. Right. Look at 1 Peter, chapter 2, verse 1. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and all hypocrisies and all envies and all evil speakings. The beautiful thing about how, how this verse has just been rendered is this. What it says. Wherefore, laying aside all malice. I just love it. This is why I find it, me personally, and I, I, it's not because I'm, I'm, I'm so oity-toity. It's not so, because I'm, I'm so long in the tooth in this, in, this, in this walk. No, because there are some people who are long in the tooth in this, in this walk, and they still, it's still maliceful. It says, you've got to lay aside malice. You have to learn to do it. Oh, my goodness. You've got to lay aside malice and all guile and hypocrisy. 
and envy and all evil speaking. You've got to lay that aside. Get rid of that junk. But some of our people find it, it's, it's like they make two steps forward or, or, or one, yeah, two steps forward and then one step backwards. That's what they do. You see them coming forward and they get him, then they step back and you go, oh, why did you do that? Or they allow outside forces, which I like to call spirits, because whether you believe it or not, a person is a spirit, and they, those spirits do attack you. Why do they attack you? Because they start saying stuff in your head, messing you up, taking you off balance, taking you off kilter. And sometimes the enemy will use those closest to you to mess you up that way. And then down the road you wonder, how did I get here when I wasn't here? I was better than this. You have to lay those things aside. Verse 2, go ahead and read, officer. Verse 2, as newborn babies, as newborn babies, babes, desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. See, you have to desire as newborn babies. And the newborn means... Newborn to this truth. Oh, but, but I've been a bishop for 30 years. Oh, forget that. You've been a bishop for 30 years. Don't mean you know the word. I've been saved for 50 years. Really? You haven't been saved? You've been saved. You'd have left here a long time ago. You're still working it out. That's why you're still here. He's given us opportunity as newborn babes desiring the sincere milk of the word that you may, here's the word may, the cause to the effect, may grow thereby. It is this that's going to cause us to grow. Let's go to Isaiah 28 and verse 10. Let's go back there. You know that scripture very well. <coughs> Excuse me. Book of Isaiah, chapter 28, verse 10. For precept must be upon precept. Really? Precept, precept upon precept. Line upon line. Line upon line. Here a little and there a little. Go from there to Romans chapter 10 and 1. So precept must be upon precept. Making it very clear. Precept must be upon precept. Here a little, there a little. Line upon line. We take from one part of the scriptures and add it to another part. You know, Edom does not understand that. Edom does not understand that. And here's the joke of it. When you're talking to Edom, Edom will turn around to you and say, um, read the entire chapter. Because you're not reading the entire chapter. How are you going to understand it? Wait, well, just go to show. They don't get it. Reading, what, reading the chapter or, or the verse, or the several verses, gives you, to some degree, an idea of what is being trying to, uh, what's, what the, uh, the writer is trying to convey. But in order to make sense of it, you have to pull from another scripture. Because the key is in another scripture. Remember what I said? It's like a puzzle. You have to take a piece from one place to put it over there, and, 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 and you try, and, and if it doesn't fit, then you have to remove that and find a piece that will fit. You're building something that you can see. All right, in Romans chapter 10 and verse 1, uh, let's read. Romans chapter 10, verse 1. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to Yahweh for Israel is that they might be saved. That, that, that they might be saved? He said, brethren, my, my heart's desire and prayer to the Most High for Israel is that they might be saved. 
Says how? To get to the end and be what they were called or selected to be. But verse 2 says, read. Verse 2, For I bear them record that they have a zeal of Yahweh, but not according to knowledge. There it is. They have a zeal, but not according to knowledge. And what that means is that they are ignorant of operating in the, in the law, the truth. They have no idea of what the law says. For I bear witness, or I bear record, that they have a zeal of Yah, but not according to knowledge, not according to the law. That's really what it's really pointing to. Interesting. From here, if you please, let's go to Isaiah 55 and verse 7. Isaiah 55 and verse 7 is going to make this very, very abundantly clear. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Book of Isaiah, chapter 55, verse 7. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto the Most High, and he will have mercy upon him, and to our Yah, for he will abundantly portion. Pardon. Now, what I want you to see here is this. It says, Pardon. let the wicked forsake his ways. Now, which wicked is speaking about? Not speaking about the wicked who is Esau. Because again, you know, our, our foolish brethren will say, see, he's talking about the, the Esau here. So, so, so Esau can be, no, that's not what he's talking about. Let the wicked, meaning the wicked that are among us. We have some wicked Israel. You'll find that in First Maccabees chapter, uh, chapter 1. You can read that and find it. You can read that in Second Maccabees uh, chapter 6 and 6, so read all the way down. There are some wicked Israelites that's among us. And even by today's standard, you look around, we have some wicked Israelites. So it said, let the wicked Israelites forsake his ways. In other words, wicked Israelites stop doing those things, and the unrighteous man, his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord. Now, Esau can't return unto something he never belonged to. So this must only then be Israel. And we will have mercy, or sorry, he will have mercy upon him. And to our Yah, for he will abundantly pardon. Meaning, he has bags of, of, of forgiveness for his people. That's a wonderful thought to know. Read verse 8 for me, please, officer. Verse 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Most High. See that? So he says, for my thoughts, the way I think, you can't even enter into the same universe. He said, my ways are past your ways. And he, and he gives a, a similitude of it in verse 9. He said, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. And my thoughts than your thoughts. I'm on a completely different plane to you. Brother, you're not even there yet. <laughs> uh, so he's letting us know that we are nowhere near him. Glory be. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 13 and 13. I love that one. Proverbs 13 and 13. I, I, I love this verse. It's, so it, it, it's one of those verses you, you use out, out in, in, in the streets each week. All right. Proverbs 13 and 13. Go ahead. <coughs> Excuse me. Book of Proverbs, chapter 13, verse 13. 
Whoso despiseth the word shall be destroyed, but he that feareth the commandment shall be rewarded. See that? And, and the reason why it's one of those scriptures that you use out on the streets is because of this. Watch this. People will always say, don't read the Bible. Tell me what is your thoughts. What do you think? <laughs> it's not about what we think. It's not about what, what, what my thoughts are. Because he said that his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. <laughs> so his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. It's not about what we think. And this is why it's one of the scriptures you've got to read to the, those individuals to, to cut them. Whoso despises the word shall be destroyed. Brother, you're going to be destroyed. Sis, you're going to be destroyed. Oh, don't read about it. Just tell me, what do you think? You keep on reading the scriptures. That's what we're here to do, read the scriptures. Not, not, to, not to give you our opinion. But he that feareth the commandments, the commandments, the commandments, the commandments, shall be rewarded. There's a reward for it. Let's go back, if you please, to Romans chapter 10 and 2. Romans chapter 10 and 2. I'm, I'm not far from finishing, so bear with me. Hang with me. Book of Romans chapter 10, verse 2. For I bear, bear them record that they have a zeal of Yahweh, but not according to knowledge. You see that? We read uh, a similar script early on. Now, the, 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 the reason why it's making us very, very clear, and as, as, we, as we read this again, is to drive the point home that people do not understand that the Most High is trying to get us to recognize that he has something great in store for us. For I bear witness, or I bear record that they have a zeal, that they have a drive, that they, they have a, a, um, a, um, a, a, um, a compelling force behind them. But it's not according to knowledge. Verse 3, sir, read. Verse 3, For they being ignorant of, of Yahweh's righteousness, and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of Yahweh. That's it. Because they're ignorant of the righteousness of the Most High God, and they're trying to establish a righteousness that has no foundation, which is built on their own opinion and their own precepts. And he said, because you've, you've submitted yourself a lot like that, you are not going to have any part of him. Verse 4 turns around and says, for, for Yahweh Shai is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. Let me repeat that. For Yahweh Shai is the end of the law of righteousness to everyone that believeth. Meaning that whilst you are in him, the law of righteousness is what keeps you along with following the law, statutes, and commandments. He reinforces it because you believe, you walk in it. And then there's, there's more with that, but again, I don't want to get uh, distracted. So let's go from here, if you please, to Jeremiah chapter 17 and 9. And now you're going to understand why. Uh, uh, as we read earlier, where it says, for they being ignorant of, of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. We're going to prove that now in the script we're going to read in, in Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 9. Go ahead, sir. Book of Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9. The heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Wow. Wow. It, it, it makes it absolutely abundantly clear there that it lets us know that the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? 
That's why you can't operate out of your own uh, spirit. You have to operate out of the spirit of the Most High God because you're dealing with, with a heart that um, will get you into trouble. Now, we read last night in the scripture, and I don't want to go to, uh, bring that scripture out, but I proved to the brothers that there was a seed that was placed in us that had made us the way that we are. We're not the way that we are simply because we just came along and, 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 and we are this way. We are this way because there was a seed that was planted in us that made us come like this. We are truly messed up. Well, uh, I, I'm, I'm tempted to go there, but I won't. <laughs> Don't worry, brothers, I won't go there again. But I'll, I'll touch it in a few, at a future date for the rest of us. But the heart is desperately wicked. So if we then go from here to Proverbs 28 and verse 26, it will tell you, don't trust your heart. Let's go there. Because we just realized it's desperately wicked. Now let's prove it even further. So, <clears throat> verse 28. Go ahead. Book of Proverbs, chapter 28, verse 26. He that trusteth, trusteth, trusteth his own heart is a fool, but whoso walketh wisely, he shall be delivered. See that? He that trusteth his own heart is a fool. But whosoever walketh wisely, he shall be delivered. You have to recognize you can't trust your heart. Why? Because again, there is a seed in it that causes you to fail. It was put in you from the beginning. People ask the question, well, if Adam was your Hawashai in the beginning, how did he mess up? The father put a seed in him to make him fail. He wasn't supposed to. He failed because the father put a trap in there which, which he had no power over. And he could only go with the circumstance that he was in. I, I said I wasn't going to go into that. And I opened up my mouth. <laughs> Let's start to go with that there. All right. So it lets us know that he that trusted his own heart is a fool. You can't trust your own heart, brethren. You just, you just can't. That's why the scripture says, trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he will direct thy path. That's what he tells us. Let's go to Second Timothy chapter 3 and 15. Well, I've got a few scriptures left, ladies and gentlemen, so just bear with me. Hang with me. Second Timothy, Second Timotheus, chapter three. Book of Second 15. Timothy, book of Second Timothy, chapter three, verse fifteen, and that from a child thou hast hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is the Yahushiach Yahweh See, so it lets you know there. We read it earlier. We're reading it again. That from a child, we have known the scriptures. Many of us were raised in the faith. I was. Many of us that I'm speaking to were. And, and you know what? At some point in our lives, unless we were living on the rock, we all went to a church service somewhere. And, and, but it tells us clearly that from a child, thou hast known the holy scriptures, not scripture. So we're meant to know the Holy Scriptures. The Scriptures makes us wise unto salvation. That's what it's saying. Wisdom unto salvation through faith, which is in the Amashiach. All right. Just very quickly, humor me just for a moment. Go back to Proverbs 13 and 13. Just do that for me just one more time. Proverbs chapter 13 and 13. <clears throat> Excuse me. Book of Proverbs chapter 13, verse 13. Whoso despiseth the word 
shall be destroyed, but he that feareth the commandment shall be rewarded. Shall be rewarded. So it's in obeying and following his word that we are rewarded, not following what's in our own spirit. All right. Uh, let's, I, I just want to give uh, a couple of things, and then I'm going to be finished. Uh, let's go to John 3.16. Again, this scripture is for yourself, uh, primarily Darius. Um, uh, I'm sorry, Dustrius. I, I keep calling you Darius for some reason. Forgive me, Dustrius. Dustrius, all right. This scripture is for you. John 3.16, because it's a common scripture that we, we use, and it's a common scripture that you'll find people will always say, what about John 3.16 then? Go ahead and read for me, please, officer. Book of John, chapter 3, verse 16. For Yah so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Right. So the, the key that we have to understand, it, it says God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. Now, the, the challenge that we must understand is that the word world does not mean the entire world world it, it, it doesn't now there are those who will want to fight you and say it does mean the, the whole world that's not what it means it doesn't mean that at all and to prove that you have to have a backup scripture to go with that to explain to people that there are more than one worlds so the more than one worlds you have to go to hebrews chapter one and two but that's the key scripture to uh, bring that understanding out. Hebrews chapter 1 and 2. Go ahead and read once you've got it, officer. Book of Hebrews chapter 1, verse 2. <coughs> Excuse me. Hath in these that last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. See that? You see that? So it says he made the worlds, by whom also he made the worlds, letting us know there are more than one world. Now, you will often at time and also meet the obstinate individual who says that one part of the scriptures, well, no, it isn't, go to stay in the same book, Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 3. Book of Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of Yahweh, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. So, you see, it's letting you know that there is more than one world. There are worlds. Today we have um, Olympic world, sea world, music world, uh, news world. There's different types of world. There's the world of the Arab, the, 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 the world of, of, of sport, the world of film. There are different worlds. we are worlds within worlds. Now, knowing that, it helps you to also understand that he is speaking more openly than what people thought. Uh, let's just jump back Old Testament for a quick moment. Go to Isaiah 45 and 17. Uh-oh. Book of Isaiah, chapter 45, verse 17. But Israel shall be saved in the Most High with an everlasting salvation, he shall not be ashamed nor confounded, world without end. See that? So Israel, as, it, as you just read very clearly there and succinctly, that Israel is a world without end. A world without end. So when people turn around to you and say, well, you know, it's, it's, it's not speaking about that. It's usually because they, they don't know what they're talking about. Israel is a world without end. In other words, no matter what man tries to do to destroy Israel, they cannot destroy Israel. They cannot do it. 
because Israel is a world without end. And, and, and again, our people need to understand that very clearly when they are um, explaining this to their friends, uh, brethren, etc., etc. Israel was a world that was made never to be destroyed. All right, from there, let's go back to uh, Titus chapter, no, uh, uh, yeah, Titus chapter 2 and 11, and, and then I've just got two more scriptures. <laughs> Book of Titus, chapter 2, verse 11. For the grace of Yahweh that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. So remember what we just opened with, that this salvation is not for all men, but only for men who are of Israel, the people who are of Israel. It is the, the world of Israel that this is for. Salvation is not for everyone, only Israel. So what about the rest of the world then? Because obviously that question is always going to be asked. I've answered it many times in times past. Is this, they are already living in their salvation. They're already living in their heaven. The other day I was watching the, 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 uh, the, the TV and I, I paused it for a moment and the screensaver came up. And as the screensaver came up, it started to show these different landscapes within America. They showed some mountains and valleys and, and lakes and rivers. And I thought to myself, my God, those are beautiful sceneries. I mean, it, it looked like a heaven. Uh, you know, when you see the, the, the rocky mountains and then you see the rolling hills and then you see the trees, the forestry leading down to a lake, it, it, it was breathtaking. It's just absolutely mind-blowing. And there are certain parts of Alaska that's like that. When you see it, it it's just breathtaking. Now, one would turn around and say, well, you know, they're not in their heaven. Yes, they are. This is their heaven. And that's why the scripture teaches us that once he destroys their heaven, which is this country, he will make a new garden. That new garden will be Edom again. Edom was the, was the most beautiful, tranquil, beautifying heavenly place on earth that, had, that anyone had ever seen. And it was meant to, it was a piece of, 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 of Yahweh's world being put on earth that was meant to take over the earth. But, but sin stopped it. So that's going to be in order again. And that's why the, the, the writer says, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of men those things which Yahweh has gone forth to prepare for, for his people. Now, when you look at that, when you see what he's going to do and how he's going to make it, it will be a stunning utopia on earth that the nations will, will envy us to see where we live. Listen, look, remember the way that people from other countries look at America now, especially when they come from poor, um, war-torn countries, and they look at America. They long to want to come to America. Well, in our kingdom, they will long to want to come. That's why when we will have feast days, they, and, 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 the, and the, uh, uh, the alert will go out for them to come to our feast days, they, they will scurry and, and run to come because they want to see the heaven that the Most High God has created on earth for us. It's going to be a marvelous time. That's why when we are practicing all that we're practicing now, we don't fully understand it. But in that day, when you are dressed to the nine and you are looking like something extraordinary, 
And when the nations come and they view you, they will be looking at you the way you see today. People look at those who go to the red carpet for those Academy Awards movies or whatever it is. You will be the ones that they will be looking at in awe. I want to touch you and touch your shoe, touch the hem of your clothing, just to say that they touched you. Because you will be like a God on earth. Glory be to his matchless name, Yahweh Bashiem. Let's go to the closing scripture. Let's go to uh, Romans chapter 9 and 1 first. Romans chapter 9 and 1. Book of Romans chapter 9, verse 1. I say the truth in the Yamashiach. I lie not. My conscience also beareth, bear, bearing witness, bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost. Go on. Verse 2. That I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. Verse 3. Go on. For I could wish that myself were cursed from Yahamashiach or my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. According four, to the flesh. Go on. Verse 4. Who are Israelites to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of Yahweh and the promises? All right. Now, what I want to, want to do again Brother Dustrius, again, focus on you and yourself also, Brother John. Listen to this. From Romans chapter 9, 1 to 4, it gives us a detailed description of, of whom Paul is speaking about and the things that it's in regards to. He says, I say... The truth in Yahawashai, I lie not. My conscience also beareth me witness in the Holy Spirit that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in, in my spirit. For I could wish that myself were a curse from Yahawashai for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh, meaning that they were born just like him. Verse 4 said, Who's, Who are Israelites? Semicolon. So it's letting you know, it's not speaking about all men. According to Titus chapter 2 and 11, not talking about all men who are Israelites. To whom pertaineth the adoption? When the scripture speaks about the adoption, the word adoption simply implies the bringing back and the glory dealing with the power and the covenant dealing with the Lord and, uh, and the giving of the Lord and the service. Only we can be priests and, 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 and for the Most High God and the promises. The promises are only to Israel. He says all of that, and it begins by saying, who are Israelites? Now, to confirm that, which is my last scripture, Acts chapter 1 and 6. Watch this. Let's go there first. Acts chapter 1 and 6. Book of Acts chapter 1, verse 6. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? Notice, they didn't say the kingdoms of this world. They didn't say the kingdom of, of um, Arabia. Wilt thou at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? Because it's about Israel. Who is Israel? You. Jump to chapter 2, verse 21. Watch this. Book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 21. And it shall come to pass 
that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. <clears throat> Notice, he, it uses the word whosoever. Now, if you didn't know your scripture, you'll say, see, it says whosoever. So it's, so it's talking about everybody then. And you know how they cop an attitude at that point. But remember, you have to set them up for that. <laughs> and then you say, all right, read on. Verse 22. Ye men of Israel. Oh, there it is. <laughs> you men of Israel. <coughs> not talking about the entire world. not talking about all men. You men of Israel. Read on, officer. Hear these words. Yahushua of Nazareth, a man approved of Yah among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which Yah did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. There it is. Game, set, and match. <laughs> I was waiting for that one. Yes, that was a good one. So now you see how the whole thing has come together. And as I opened and said, No, if you know the history, you will know the mystery. The yes, scriptures yes. is a mystery, but you have to also learn the history, and that's what makes it better. Because uh, Brother Johnny um, mentioned the other day about me knowing the history, and n now, Brother John, you can understand why I study history. Yes. Because oh. it's the history that helps me to understand the mystery of, of the revelations, of, of, the, of the Jeremiah's, of the Deuteronomy's. Because remember, the book of Deuteronomy, the, the, it means second law. So the history behind that law that Moses gave, we have to understand it. And that's what it's all about, understanding the history of our people. And when we understand the history of our people, then we know which way to go. Remember, every, every other nation knows their history. We are the only ones who don't know our history. So that's why it, it's, it, it, it's, um, it's important for us to know our history and to get good books, not any books. Sometimes some of them, I've seen some brothers with some books. I said, I wouldn't recommend that book because it's a bias. Some books mm -hmm. are biased to make you... Um, uh, have a um, uh, a blinded eye at some of the things of your history. The good books are the ones that gives you the whole <coughs> truth and nothing but the truth. All right. Is there any questions for anyone out there um, before uh, we uh, wrap this up? Uh, I think we've had a good good portion. That was a All great, right. great, great question. Great um, let, me, uh, let me answer a question that just has come through. If you do have my, um, my, my number and you want to send a text message to ask a question, you're more than welcome to do that. Uh, one of the questions is, in the kingdom, will the Most High dwell with us? And if so, in what capacity? And angel... Scripture, please. All right. Good scripture. I mean, good question. Now, the Most High um, will never dwell with us at this particular stage. Uh, let me explain that. He has his home. Uh, how does a God go from a superior position to a position that's inferior to him. If you can imagine the, the splendor of where he is, it's beyond our understanding. Uh, but remember, remember, the Bible says that the half has not yet been told, meaning all that we should know has not yet been revealed. Meaning, in other words, there are still some things that will happen in the future of Israel that has not even been discussed in the scriptures. There are, we only get right now 
the portion that is needed and necessary for us to make it into the kingdom. It's like you're running a race, and you've run the race, and now you've run into the, the section um, where you, you, you've crossed the finish line. Now, once you've crossed the finish line, you've entered into a new place. You've never been there before. But there are some things in that place that, that's going to be revealed to you that will, that will tell you, where do you go from here? Those are the things that have not yet been revealed to us, and those things we can only get in the kingdom. The only person who, who, will, who will reign with us is Yahawashai. Now, in, in what capacity? He will be king. He will be on the earth ruling with an iron rod. And he will do that for the first 1,000 years, the first millennia. That's why, as a church, we're called the New Millennium City Church because we understand the millennium, the millennia. He's going to rule with us for one millennia and, and beyond. But in that first millennia, it will be a time of punishment upon the other nations. <coughs> All the other nations will receive punishment for the sins uh, and deeds that they have done to the, the, the true children of God. You see? But he will, he, will, he, will, he, will be, he will be with us. He will sit on the throne. He will eat with us. He will, he will speak with us, etc., and we will see him. Now, some of us will be more closer to him than others because, remember, there are going to be, there is 144, which is a higher level of leadership. Then, then there is the elect. So the elect comes the other people, which are the two-thirds who were destroyed. So you see, there are, there are hierarchical levels. The same way that you, that you notice on right now, we have governmental levels, and then you have regionals, and you have governors, and you have senators, etc. Something similar to that, but obviously better. Not in, not in that carniality type way. Um, as far as scripture, um, I can't give any scripture about um, Yahweh being down here because there isn't any scripture about him being down here. But it does say in the book of Revelations, and I think it's the very last verse of the last uh, chapter. Let me see if I can just pull it up real quick for you. Um, in Revelations chapter 22, um, it says, uh, let me see if I can find. Officer, do you have your scriptures still open? Yes, I do, Pastor. All right. Uh, go ahead and read from Revelation chapter 22. 22 and, and 21. Uh, sorry? 22 and 21? No, uh, no, 22 and 14, and just go forward. Uh, I'm sorry, okay. 22 and, and, uh, uh, and 12. 22 and 12, and then just go forward. Book of Revelations, chapter 22, verse 12. And behold, <clears throat> I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according to his work, according as his work shall be. Verse 13. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Verse 14, blessed are all they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. Verse 15, for without any dogs and, and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. Verse 16, I, Yahawashah, has set mine angels to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am not the root and the offspring of David. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. Verse 17, and the spirit and the bride say, come, and let him that heareth say, come, and let him that <clears throat> is artist come, and whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. Verse 18, for I testify unto every man that heareth the words of my prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, Yahweh shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. Verse 19, 
And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, Yahweh shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. Verse 20, he which testify these, testifieth these things saith, surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come, Lord Yahawashai. Verse 21, the grace of our Lord Yahawashai, Yamashiach, be with you all. Amen. All right. Now, th- th- that's the answer pretty much to the question that it's, it is Yahawashai who is coming. It's Yahawashai who will reign with us. It's Yahawashai that will bring the reward. It's Yahawashai that will render the, 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 the deaths upon uh, those of us who uh, add to or has distorted the word, death meaning that they will be part of the nuclear disaster that will take place on the earth. Now, will those individuals come back? Yes, they'll come back to shame by way of being born into the kingdom. Now, a person say, well, is, is being born into kingdom shame? Yes, it is. It is because you're meant to be part of the elect, but you're born into the kingdom, and it will be revealed why you were born into the kingdom because of your obstinacy. All those things will be revealed so that um, the person will say, well, so how will it be? You're born in there somewhere? No, because um, uh, the, a record will be written out as to the, the roles you played. That's, what, that's why in the book of Jude, it tells us that in, in fact, let me let me read it for you. In Jude, in Jude, verse um, in in Jude verse four, it says this. It says um, it, it says this. For there are certain men crept up unaware who were before of old ordained to the condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our Yah into lasciviousness and denying the only um, Lord Yahweh and our Lord Yahweh Shai. Um, and then it says, I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this. You see? I won't bother to read anymore. That's all I wanted to bring out. So yes, you will be, you will be, you will remember, and when you are, you you will be in, in shame, but you will be restored. And that that's why he says that what we read earlier said that he he has he, he will nourish us with um, punishment or words to that effect. We read earlier on. Any other questions? Hey, Pastor. I know that. Um. Pastor, in Revelation 21, is that also a precept to uh, Revelation uh, 22? Uh, Revelation 21 and 3. Uh, so Revelation, say again, sir, Revelation 20. Chapter 21, verse 3. 21, verse 3. Uh, that, yes. that says, I heard a great voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of Yah is with men and he will de- he will dwell with them and they shall yes sir yes yes sir that's a good one that's a good one that's a good one in fact let, let me read it all and i heard a, a great voice out of heaven saying behold the tabernacle of yah is with men and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people and Yah himself shall be with them and be their Yah. Good one, sir. Good one. Good one. All right. And uh, I think that, I'm not sure, I think that links with Revelations 10 and 8, I think. Let me just quickly just, let me have a quick look, see. 10 and 8, let me see. Um, And the voice I heard from heaven speaking unto me again, saying, go and take the little book. Yes. So it's the same thing. Yes, that, 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 that's good. All right. Anyone else? Any uh, Pastor, questions? I'd just like to tell Darius, tell Darius to be out there by two. 
<laughs> okay, okay, all right, right 2 o'clock. Okay, 2 o'clock. All right, okay. Huh? All right. All right, all right. Okay. Well, 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 brothers, this is for question right now. This is not about you meeting or whatever. You've talked about that once we get off the line here. <laughs> Come on. This is, this, is, this is learning time. All right, any other questions to do with what we either studied or anything pertaining to it? Go we'll teach. Anything? Any sisters have any questions? No. All right. Okay. All right. Um, I, I, I've got a couple of my e- emails, uh, not email, texts. Uh, come on, let me read the text. Um, the Apocrypha means hidden book. Is that why the heathens removed it? Is that why some camps omit it? Yes. Because, unfortunately, some of the camps who omit it, they... They haven't read it, and, and, and therefore they're still blinded by it. Um, the Apocrypha uh, means hidden books. Is that why the hidden? Yes. Uh, yes, that, that, is, that is exactly the reason, ma'am. People have um, omitted it because they haven't taken the time to read it, and they're still, un- unfortunately, basking in the, in the delusions of what the, the Protestant church has taught them. So they're still operating by Christianity, whether they recognize it or not. All right, anything else? I'll take one more, and then I'm going to um, close in prayer, and then we will dismiss. All right, um, officer, if you could stop the recording at this time.